Hey everybody, it's Steve with Real Progressives. Some of you guys are used to me taking a hard hit at the Democrats. Tonight, we're going to take a talk about how we talk with Donald Trump folks. And for me, one of the most important things about this whole talks with Trumpers is that you find that they have many of the same concerns that we have, right? They've got their finger on the pulse of many of the problems. But their solutions are wildly different, right? I mean, wildly different. But in talking with several of them today, I realized that their hatred for Hillary Clinton is, you know, hey, wow, okay, wow, so, so you don't like Hillary. Tell me why you don't like Hillary. And the things that they say, unfortunately, they got all the wrong things. They don't like her for a host of things that have nothing to do with who she is, have nothing to do with her. I mean, they're, they're really, really, really bad fox yarns, right? And, and I'm sitting there saying, well, I can't stand her either. I can't stand Hillary. I mean, like, when I say I can't stand her, I mean, I bet you I can one-up you on how much I dislike her. And they're like, well, you know, what about the open border? She's going to let everybody in the country. And I'm like, no, she's not. She's just as whack on immigration as you guys are. The only difference is she pedals a different tune because she's got a public face and a private face. I said, she wanted to build a wall just like Donald Trump. And they're like, huh? And I'm like, sadly. And I'm like, so the bottom line is, is that what is it that you like about Donald Trump? What is it that you see about Donald Trump that is worth taking note of? And at the end of the day, what they're talking about is that he's the anti-Hillary. That's it. That's the beginning and the ending of the conversation. Um, they think he's going to bring back jobs. Okay. So tell me about how he's going to bring back jobs. Was he going to cut wages so low that they want to come manufacture Hershey wrappers? You know, they want to make Hershey kisses back in the United States because he brings and lowers wages so low that they're willing to treat Americans like slave labor instead of uh, Indonesia? Is that it? And I'm like, whenever you talk about cutting federal spending, you are not helping with jobs. You're not growing the economy. Period. And they're like, what? What? What are you talking about? And I'm like, why don't you like Hillary? Tell me again why you don't like Hillary. Well, she's crooked. She's a liar. She... And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. I'm with you so far. Following along, noted. We're on the same side. And then I say, but what about climate change? Hillary doesn't believe any of the stuff either because she's out there selling fracking around the world. Well, climate change is Al Gore's crazy nonsense. Al Gore's set up to make a bunch of money off of climate change. It's like, so you don't like Hillary because you think she's actually for climate change, for fixing climate change. We don't like Hillary because she know, we know she's not about climate change. Okay. So, we talk about immigration. It's like, well... She'll let all those Syrians in and she'll let all those crazy terrorists into the country. And she won't be in, no checks, no borders, no nothing. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to have jihad in the United States. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, I have been accosted by a guy in a 4x4 with a big old stars and bars on the back rolling coal blowing smoke in my face because I'm not in a big rig lifted up with the big old flag hanging off the back. I've been accosted by them, but I have never, ever, ever, ever been accosted by a Muslim. I have never, ever once had someone yell Allah Akbar and try to kill me, ever. But I have had somebody raise up their gun, put it on the dashboard and go, let me tell you something, boy. You keep up that smart mouth, I'll kill you. But I've never, ever, ever, ever had a Muslim try to kill me. I've never had one do it. So I sat there and talked through that with them. And I was like, what is it that you think is going to happen by allowing refugees into this country? 
well, it's not refugees. It's, it's all these people that they're not checking. They're not even checking them. They're just letting them in. There's just big, wide open thing. And I'm like, wrong. They have to check these Syrian refugees to the point where it takes like almost years to get through this. We're not talking about just random people coming into the country. We're talking about there is a huge long line of vetting that's probably too long. These people need to get out of there and they need to live. They're human beings. They're not dogs. They're not, and even if they were dogs. So at the end of the day, they, they, they're they all wrapped around the axle about all the wrong stuff. They hate Hillary. Again, that's our common bond, and that's the beginning and the ending of it. Then we started talking about government spending. Well, when the government buys a hammer for $500 per hammer, that's wasteful spending. And I'm like, that's a pretty high price for sure. I mean, I, I can't afford a $500 hammer, and I would like to see that change, but... What is it that you're afraid of in particular? Tell me what it is you're afraid of in particular about that. Because, I mean, it's a bad thing, but why do you think it's a bad thing? Well, I don't want my tax dollars paying for a $500 hammer. Well, good news, your tax dollars aren't paying for a $500 hammer. But um, tss. Well, what do you mean? It's like, listen, when the government spends money, that money goes out to Main Street. Sometimes, if we do it wrong, it goes to the top, and then we deal with trickle-down. That's what the whole trickle-down is, that, that urine-on-your-head feeling. That warm sensation is the wealthy taking a pee on your head. But when the government spends money, the economy improves. They're like, huh? And I'm like, yeah, that's the way it works. The U.S. government spends money into existence, and it taxes money to pull it out of existence. It's kind of like a cycle. That's how it works. Well, so what happens to my tax dollars? They're deleted on the balance sheet. It's like pfft, an entry. Entry removes them from the balance sheet A. They get spent out of the balance sheet B. They get taken back out of the economy, balance sheet A. That's it. That's what happens. So what happens with my tax dollars? They're deleted. They're purged. They're gone. So you mean my taxes don't fund that stuff? Nope. No, they don't. And so they're like, well, well, I still don't like Hillary. We don't like Hillary either. See how it always circles back? We don't like Hillary. And it's like, okay, guys, we're all angry. Let's all be angry together. But let's be smart in our anger. You're, you guys are like starting. You're about thimble deep on the anger there, folks. You're just angry as hell about stuff you don't know nothing about. But I get the anger because I'm right there with you. And so we kept talking and talking and talking. And I said, listen, I said, at the end of the day, neither one of these two buffoons, Hillary or Donald Trump, are worth a damn. I said, I'm supporting Jill Stein. Maybe you've heard of her. No, I haven't heard of her. <laughs> well, Jill Stein, let me tell you about Jill Stein. Jill Stein has very similar economic plan as Bernie Sanders had. She wants to eliminate student debt. She wants to spend money into existence on the 99%. She wants to fix the climate. She has a Green New Deal. What's that? That sounds like that Al Gore stuff. Not much you can do with that one, right? Because it's like the trapped in this box, this box of Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican. And I'm like, guys, listen to me. George W. Bush Sr., H. W. Bush, has signed on to Clinton. Brent Scowcroft, signed on to Clinton. Bob Kagan, signed on to Clinton. Paul Wolfowitz, signed on to Clinton. There's a reason that the neocons are signing on for Clinton. Why do you suppose that is? Well, because they're, they're Republicans in name only. They're really liberals. <laughs> no, wrong answer. It's because they're going where the war is. They know that Hillary will get the war machine going and all their buddies will start making moolah. Because Republicans know about deficit spending, right? They spend like drunken sailors on the military. So Republicans kind of sometimes get 
how to keep the economy going. The difference is they end up slashing and burning all the friggin' safety nets. And so the poor end up suffering and the wealthy end up getting wealthier. And then the wealth gap keeps increasing. Well, guess what? The Democrats do it too. And they do it worse. Why is that? Because they make people like you and the Trumpers get into the mindset that you believe that somehow or another they're fighting for African Americans, that they're fighting for the homosexual community, that they're fighting for Hispanics, that they're fighting. So they don't like it because, well, whatever, man. They don't really care for anybody that's different than them. The flip side is, is that the black people are being screwed to the hilt by Democrats who sit there and tell them, I got your back, baby. And then they end up punching them right in the back of the head. As soon as they walk by, bam. There's no love there. It's a big facade. So I say, hey guys, we're all screwed here. You get Hillary, you're screwed. You get Trump, you're screwed. Well, why is that? Because Hillary will be able to enact these Republican plans. Trump would not be able to re enact Republican plans. You see? Hillary can actually enact GOP plans and will enact GOP neoliberal plans. Donald Trump will be completely and utterly blocked by the vote blues because, just like the Trumpers don't know Jack, the blues don't know Jack, and they're just going to fight. They hate Donald Trump. It's just bona fide moronic. So as I kept talking and kept talking and talking, it was like, you know, I really don't want to fight about this. I'm like, but but we agree. I don't want I don't want Hillary in there either. You see how that is? We're kind of like homies of a different kind. And they're like, yeah, but but you're into that climate change stuff and it's a hoax. So these are the things, folks. You want to make you know bridges and stuff like that. You got to find a way to make the Trumpers understand climate change. You got to find a way without being holier than thou about climate change to break it down for them so they understand that you didn't like Al Gore that much back then either. Al Gore was still a corporate puppet, just like Clinton. Even though he said some nicer things about the climate, Al Gore wasn't any great man either. Al Gore is part of that same structure. They don't want to criticize their own any more than the vote blues want to criticize their own. It's up to people like us who are woke, 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 who actually understand the issues to take the time. If each one of us sat back, I don't know, spent a couple hours here and there talking to their friends that are Trumpers, not beating them over the head with a bunch of lingo that they know are going to set them off. Meeting them at their point of need. Becoming salespeople for the movement. Understanding the movement and being able to talk to them. Taking that outrage that they have and putting some knowledge behind it. We could improve our numbers tenfold. They're just ignorant. That's it. But so are the Vote Blues. The Vote Blues, in my opinion are the greater danger to our nation because they know better. They believe in climate change. They believe in racial justice. They believe in civil liberties. Yet, when it comes time for voting and holding their own accountable, they don't do it because just vote blue no matter who. Therefore, they are the greater evil. To know better put you into a different classification of asshole. Once you know better, I expect you to do better. I don't expect that much from the Republicans. I don't expect much from the poor white working class people that haven't been given the chance to learn this stuff, who have been indoctrinated for years and years and years with this stuff. It's going to take effort and not just shaming them. It's going to take concerted effort. You're going to have to want to change the world. 
And you can't do it just by yelling and screaming at them. Vote blues are a different story. They know better, yet they do terrible. They know that climate change is real, yet when Hillary talks about fracking, they say, well, you know, she got a reason for it, right? Got a reason for it. It's always a good reason. It's a blue reason, right? It's a reason. It's a good reasons. Lots of good reasons. Reasons and stuff. You know, why is that? Oh, you know, reasons. Reasons. We got reasons. Reasons for sure. Reasons. So for me, when I think about what is the greater win for the progressive movement, I think we make greater strides picking off the working class white Americans from the Trump side who are just angry but just ignorant in their anger and help direct their anger, help them understand how climate change impacts the poor, help them understand how climate change impacts the working white class, help them understand these things and help them understand that no, it's not. It's not them Mexicans and it's not the Muslims that are doing these things to you. Once you teach them economics, basic economics, all of them aren't going to understand. I wish they would, but they're not. All of them won't ever understand. But we don't need all of them to understand. We just need enough of them to understand. And then we build a coalition. And you need coalitions to win to make change. You can be a pure fool standing over in a corner with about 10 people screaming at the sky with your fists in the air. Ah! Or you can start training people, educating people, exposing them to a different reality, teaching them in a way that they'll understand, not just the way you understand it, but the way they'll understand it. It's so difficult to leave your own paradigm when you're stuck too. And you're stuck right now. You hate them. Maybe you don't hate them, but you, proverbial, you hate them. And it's very, very hard to teach someone something when the, the hate is dripping off your lips. When your eyes are seething with rage and your fists are clenched to the point where you're white knuckling it just to have a conversation. It's very difficult to bridge the divide. Now, I will tell you flat out, when I know someone knows better, and yet they don't do better, when I know someone is abusing me with gaslighting, that's when I break out the fists, and I drop the gloves, and I go for broke. When I know you know better, and you're gaslighting me, public enemy number one, it's over. Now it's on like Donkey Kong. But when you know that these people are just plain out ignorant and they don't know any better, it's up to each one of us to grow our pool, to grow our sphere of influence, even if it's just a couple people at a time. Even if it's just a couple people at a time. Now I want to tell you a quick story about the movement, about things that happen in activism. You've got a lot of people that are first timers, that have never done this before that are just getting their feet wet and they've never ever ever dealt with difficult personalities they've never dealt with people that have more knowledge than them trying to guide them and they get upset you've got people that are just want glory you've got people that don't know any better and just gossip talk shit about each other mouth off behind the scenes chitter chatter create problems for everybody that's movement killing shit, folks. That's the movement killing shit. We got to get our own house in order so that we can make change out there. You can't worry about out there until you get in here taken care of. Dead serious. Do not pass go. Do not collect 200 until you got your shit together. Because what's happening is we're taking our own pollution and we're spreading it like a cancer. Until we get our own house in order, 
until we stop sniping at each other within the movement and having a case of the feels and a case of the ego and a case of the glory hunting and the quick wit back and forth, that little sniping and sarcasm stuff. Until we get our shit together and we stop being the people's front of Judea and the Judean people's front, until we stop doing that, we are never going to impact the Trumpers. And we are never going to be able to defeat the Vote Blues. We're never ever going to make the kind of change we need until we, the smart ones, the, the progressive movement, decide that the movement is more important than personalities. And far too many of you are wrapped up in cult of personality. Still. Still. Even with hashtag not me us. You're still wrapped up in the cult of personality. You're still wrapped up in the mean girls club. Chitter chattering around your little click over here and your click over there. And the mean boys club. Sniping at each other back and forth. Until you stop with the personalities until you stop worshiping people, until you stop glory seeking, until you put the movement first, you will be ineffective, utterly ineffective. And this movement really does require servant leaders. Look it up, Google it, duck, duck, go it, whatever it, servant leadership. That's what we need. We don't need authoritarians. We don't need people that want to use words that are not going to work in a normal setting. We need people that meet people at their point of need. It's called emotional intelligence. Again, another one. Look it up. The EQ. You need to have a high emotional intelligence rating. You need to understand where people's point of need's at before you can lead them in this kind of a movement. Authoritarian isn't going to work. It will not work. You've got to know where people are at. You've got to care. Hey, so-and-so's husband is sick. Billy's not getting good grades in school. Johnny is working two jobs. Sally's got a bad tooth, and she's having neck pain. So-and-so lost their entire life savings, so they can't commit to these things. You need to pay attention to what's driving them so that when they do have energy and when they do have the ability that you can plug them into places where their talents and their energies can actually go forward and be used for the movement. And the movement, in order for it to be more than an echo chamber, has got to get its shit together so we can go out there and work with the Trumpers. And we can work with those vote blues whose mind are almost open, they're just afraid. We got to be in the business of waking people up. It's got to be pots and pans. For everybody, including ourselves. Until we wake ourselves up and we keep the fuck until we keep the motor going internally and we work to motivate our friends and our families and those around us. Until you start doing that constantly. We're not going to make the progress we need. So, Trumpers, I think they're reachable. Do I think we're going to reach many? <laughs> no, no, I don't. I'm not going to lie. It's not going to be a big win. It's not going to be like a treasure trigger carrying this big pack of Trumpers across to the finish line. It's not going to be like that. If each one of us could multiply ourselves by one or two, that's a lot of people, folks. That's enough to make some change. Don't need to do the world. Just commit to trying to get one or two of them to listen to you. Take the time for one or two people that are different than you and present these truths to them. You won't be successful most of the time. I admit it. But don't get discouraged. This is a marathon, not a sprint. But in order for us to make change... We have got to grow a critical mass. We really do. And it's not going to happen with the mainstream media. It's not going to happen with our establishment politicians. Well, actually, unfortunately, they do have critical mass right now. 
because they've got the propaganda wing of the media going for them. It's up to us to change that narrative, to change that paradigm. It's a heavy lift, folks. Are you ready for it? You think you got it in you? It's a lot of work. I'm not going to lie. I wish it was easy. But anything worth doing is worth doing right. And I sat there with my son today in Harrisburg. We were walking along the Susquehanna River by City Island. It's a beautiful place, small city, nothing fancy, uh, very, very humble city. Um, it's got its good points, it's got its bad points, but it's pretty and I enjoy it. And coming from living in Washington, D.C. most of my life, um, I enjoy this small city. I really do. I enjoy it a lot. And I looked, and everywhere I went, there were Trump signs. And I thought, wow, I've got my work cut out for me in my own backyard, don't I? And, you know, what? two of my best friends here in central Pennsylvania are Trumpers. I've got family that are Trumpers. And I try and talk to them all. And it's difficult because they're your friend and they know your weak spots and you know their weak spots. But when I was walking through City Island today with my son and Melanie and we were, we were just enjoying the day, it dawned on me how important this is. As I was looking at Mr. Butters giggling and happening and stuff, I remember, you know, I've got kids, you know, I got kids. I got a 21-year-old, I got a 19-year-old, I got an 18-year-old, I got a 16-year-old, I got an 11-year-old, I got a 10-year-old, I got a 26-year-old, I've got a 4-year-old, and I've got a 1-year-old. I can field a baseball team. Five boys and four girls. And I don't want them dying, folks. I'm willing to go to the mat. I'm willing to take a bullet for this. I'm willing to do whatever it takes by any means necessary to make sure my kids don't have to do that. So being willing to talk to Trumpers is the least I can do to keep my kids from dying in Hillary's wars. And let's say we know, hypothetically, that the odds are against us getting Jill in there, right? Let's be fair, they're against us. And let's say one of the establishment candidates gets in there. We are going to need as many of those people as possible to help us take to the streets. We're going to need as many of them as possible to help us take to the streets. This can't end on election day, my friends. This has got to become your new normal. This is your new lifestyle. This is what we do until we die. Until we're dead, man. This is it. We'll have time for resting when we're dead. And if we had some balance, if we had more participants, more people engaged, those of us who are working around the clock might take a night off and sit back with the fam. Let's do our part, folks. Let's do our part. Let's be real progressives. Let's be real progressives. Anyway, this is Steve with Real Progressives, hoping you join us on October 23rd in Washington, D.C. for the March to Take Back Democracy and that you help us spread the word of what it means to be a progressive. Thank you all very much. Have a great night.